Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I um, had some problems with my website. The webmaster that I hired didn't do what I asked, and I made it very plain and clear. I mean, I've built websites before, but I don't have the technical expertise to build a website from scratch. You know, I have to use a, uh, a, a like a builder tool. You know, you just pick the design and then pick the pictures and then pick the text. Uh, that kind of stuff I can do, you know, but so I had the company, I wrote them a letter, well, email, and asked them to install WordPress. They did it for me. I, I was surprised. I mean, so I'm going to have to learn how to do WordPress, but it looks like I'm going to have a website after all. So that's that update. Um, also, I'm still trying to get out of out of here. Don't know what will happen, but hey, what can I tell you? All right, this is going to be, this, this Bible study is going to be on Revelation, chapter 12, and it's going to be a commentary on Revelation 12, and I'm going to try to do my best to explain Revelation 12, and we're going to read it, but um, we're going to go through it and uh, see what happens. All right, let's go through Revelation chapter 12. We'll just read the whole thing, and then we'll go back. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So here it is. got a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, the thing about the Bible, sometimes the Bible is literal, sometimes the Bible is symbolic, sometimes it's past, sometimes it was present in the time of the writer, and then other times it's future. And it could be all this in just one chapter. So there's a, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of 12 stars, and she being with child cried, travailing a birth, and pained to be excuse me, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And, and if you don't know what that means, I mean, you're talking Christ. This is the Christ child. Okay. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days roughly three and a half years. So evidently the woman's Israel. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was her place found any more in heaven. Now personally, I, a lot of people say, well, Revelation's pet, the future, so this is the future. I, I think this happened in the past. Okay, the war in heaven. I mean... That's just me. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. And uh, that's what... Uh, if I remember correctly, 
That's what Satan means, basically, is accuser. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Hmm. Do you love not your life unto death? Does your witness to Christ mean more to you than your physical life? I tell you what, churches don't teach this kind of stuff. Rejoice, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil, the accuser, right? For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Isn't that basically, uh, that's got to be past. You know, you think about it. Because uh, they've been, Satan's been persecuting the woman and the man-child since uh, the Garden of Eden and then, you know, in Christ's time and all up, up to the present. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth. Ooh. So here it is. The serpent opens, uh, the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, we're not talking about the flood of Noah. God sent that, not, not the serpent, right? And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, which means angry, and the woman was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, her children, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, if you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ and you're not keeping the commandments of God, and let's face it, you know, somebody asked Christ, what was the great commandment? And he said, love the Lord. And, and he says, uh, and the other is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, on these two hang all the prop, uh, law and the prophets. So love the Lord and love thy neighbor. That's keeping the commandments of God. That's the law, that's the prophets. But then again, you know, you got the sacred name people and the Hebrew roots people, and they'll tell you, no, no, no. You, you yeah, you just, you got to keep all the laws. So, I guess they're going to help help the Jews, that unbelieving Jews, rebuild their little temple. I don't know. That's what it looks like to me. So, let's go back and break this down. So, the woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Let's take a look. Now, according to the Blue Letter Bible, the word Israel appears 2,566 times in 2,294 verses in the King James Bible. Now, if there's a word that appears over 2,500 times, I would say that word is probably pretty important. Israel. So Israel is the subject 
of the Bible. God made his covenant with Abraham, reconfirmed his covenant with Abraham's son Isaac, not Ishmael, Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, Esau, which was rejected. And if you don't believe that, read Malachi chapter 1, the first two or three verses. And then he had Esau and he had Jacob, Isaac. So you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. It means basically rules with God or prince with God. And then Jacob Israel had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes. Now, Let's go to Genesis chapter 37. We're going to read about something about, well, this is a prophecy, and it is also a story of Joseph. And I did an entire series on Joseph. If you look on my playlist, take a look at my YouTube channel, my playlist, did an entire study on Joseph. Instead of reading The Shack, that's being endorsed by a lot of people, most notably Kent Hovind, saying, oh, The Shack teaches forgiveness. Why don't you start reading in Genesis chapter 37 and read where Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, went to Egypt, became one of the top two or three people in Egypt, and he forgave his brothers. That's the story of forgiveness. His brothers were going to kill him, sold him into slavery instead. Um, I think it was Judah that said, uh, well, you know, if we kill him, you know, what profit is it? You know, let's, let's, let's just sell him into slavery. This way, you know, we get money. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, read Read Genesis. You want to read a story of forgiveness? Read the story of Joseph. That's a story of forgiveness, not the shack. Besides, Jesus said, my house are many mansions. Why do you want to live in a shack? Ugh. I can't figure. Well, yeah. What can I tell you? Genesis chapter 37. I know I get off topic. But uh, it's all relevant, I guess. All right, Genesis 37. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah. These were the handmaids. Um, Jacob had basically two wives, Rachel and Leah, and two handmaids, Bilhah and Zilpah. Um, let's see. His father's, okay, uh, the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. You see, here, Gen uh, Genesis, I mean, uh, 37, verse 2, it calls him jo Jacob. But then in verse 3, it calls him Israel. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. You know, every time I, I've mentioned it before, but every time I read that, I think of plaid. And I think of Scotland and plaid. You know, a coat of many colors, right? And when his brethren saw that his father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. All right, so let's check out this dream. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose. Now, what's a sheaf? It's a, it's a bundle of grain, like wheat or corn or whatever. 
For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. Behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. What is obeisance? It means bowing yourself down to the ground. Um, that's what you would do with a king. I mean, if, you know, you would bow down in honor and respect. So here it is. He says, my sheep arose and stood upright, but your sheaves stood round about and bowed down to my sheaf. Verse 8, and his brethren said unto him, shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now remember in Revelation we read where the, the sun, the moon, and the stars we're getting ready to see the interpretation of that. Which is the problem. People read Revelation without reading the rest of the Bible. And then they say, oh, I can't understand Revelation. Well, that's because Revelation takes all its symbolism from the Old Testament. That's, you know, and if you've never bothered to read the Old Testament, and you know, Paul wrote Timothy and told him to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you're reading the King James Bible, it will the Bible will interpret the Bible. The Bible will explain its own symbolism. Right here, it's getting ready to tell you the sun, the woman clothed with the sun, standing on the moon, and, and the 11 stars. So let's, let's, let's tear into it. And he dreamed, Joseph, right? And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Okay, 11 stars. That's his 11 brothers, right? And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Ah, listen carefully. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? So who's the son? The son was his father. Who's the moon? his mother. And the 11 stars, that's his 11 brothers. His father interpreted the dream that Joseph had. What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down our, ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Let's go back to Genesis or Revelation. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. What's whose woman? The woman's Israel, symbolic of the church. Some people would argue that, but I, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So if you had 11 stars bowing down to one star, Joseph, what's 11 plus 1? 12. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Now, the woman travailing in childbirth, was that just Mary, or was that all of the women? Well, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. 
I think this is one of the most important chapters in the Bible. Let's go read verse 1. I have a feeling this is going to be a long study, multiple parts. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, And serpent, uh, we're going to get to that, who this serpent is. And it's not a talking snake. Okay? The Bible in Revelation tells you who this serpent is. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Some of the first words out of the serpent's mouth is calling God a liar. He shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ooh. So when you eat this, you're going to be just like God, and you're going to know good and evil. You're going to be smart like him. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. You know, I always thought that was interesting. If they ate a piece of fruit, why did they make themselves aprons? What part of the body does aprons cover? Hmm. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And I did a playlist on trees, if I remember correctly. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh, what kind of a question is that? God already knows where you're at. He already knows what you did. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Guilty. And he said, God said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Oh yeah, God knew. He's just, you know, like a prosecuting attorney, already knows the answer before he even asks it. But you got to ask the question anyway. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Yeah, it's your fault, God. You gave this woman to me, and she did it. And I was just doing what she did. Right. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. It's the serpent's fault. Oh, yeah. It's not my fault. He beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed, cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, which is hatred, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, now, this is God speaking to the serpent. And I have a hard time believing this is a talking snake. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed 
and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, what seed? We're not talking about an apple tree. You know, what are what seed? It's talking about children, right? Verse 16. Listen carefully. Unto the woman, he said, God, right? Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. You know, if she ate a fruit from the tree, why didn't God give her a toothache? But instead he says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, concept and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. I wonder who her desire was before. Does that make sense? And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. All right, so let's go back to Revelation 12 and verse 2. Well, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing a birth, and pained to be delivered. Ah, so now we know why the woman, being with child, cried, travailing in, birth, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. The curse in the garden. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, what is this great red dragon? Let's take a look. All right, so you want to know who the serpent is, the great dragon? Well, it's in Revelation chapter 12. And uh, I guess we'll read verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Well, verse 7, 8, 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought with his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why was he called an old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long time. He's been around since Genesis, chap, you know, time of Genesis. In the Garden of Eden. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He deceived Eve. He told her, ye shall be his gods. Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Bingo. The serpent of Genesis 3 was the great dragon, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan. Let's face it, people. Do, talks, do snakes talk? No. All right, so. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. All right, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. We're going to explain what the uh, heads are. Daniel 7, 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heaven strove against the great sea. Hmm the great sea and the waters. Remember that, because that's going to be important. It's not necessarily talking about liquid, okay? Verse 3, And four great beasts came up from the sea, 
diverse one from another. Diverse means different. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Isn't Jesus called the lion of the tribe of Judah? I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the uh, upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. Isn't it interesting? Communist Russia's symbol was a bear, right? I'm not saying it. this is the interpretation, but it's just an interesting observation. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. According to most, men, most scholars, communist Russia was among the second largest mass murderer in history under Joseph Stalin. He absolutely murdered millions of Christians in the church. Millions. And of course, after he'd done all this, he was Time Magazine's Man of the Year, 1939. I guess Time Magazine loves people, uh, Man of the Year, you know, that murder millions of Christians, right? But then again, most of us who listen to me know who owns the media. <clears throat> Verse... Let's see, verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now let's face it, people. What, what does the head do? The head leads, leads the way. You know, you get a dog or a cow or... A lion, you know, the head leads the way. Not the tail. The head, right? The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. So evidently the heads represent kingdoms. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay? Horn, when you talk about a horn, you're talking about basically power. I consider the hordes, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there was three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, we're talking about Christ, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Let's read Revelation 1, uh, chapter 1, part of it, decide who's this ancient of days who's, you know, hair like wool. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, Revelation 1, 1, to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. All right, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So in verse 2, it said, Who bear record of the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So people that don't read this are not blessed, right? 
verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, which is, which was, and which is to come, Christ. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. I did a whole Bible study on clouds. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. There's a group of people called preterists that say that everything in the, the, the Bible happened in the past. Well, my eye didn't see him, and I don't see everybody wailing because of him. So I say this is future. I say preterists are full of cow manure. That's a nice way of putting it, right? All right, verse 8, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. You notice he said the Greek Alpha and Omega is the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. He didn't say I'm the Aleph Tav. You got to go to a Jewish Bible to get that. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Hmm. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, uh, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Listen carefully. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Didn't we just read in Daniel about the Ancient of Days, you know, the white like wool? Oh, yeah. And he had in his hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, the word of God. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when he saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks that thou sawest are the seven churches. Jesus said he was to be the light of the world. Well, the church is to be the candlestick, a light of the world, because we're supposed to proclaim Christ's words. Did you see this? The stars are the angels. Remember the dragon drew a third of the stars from heaven? The dragon's tail. 
right here it tells you the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So that uh, tells you what that is. All right. Let's go back to Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Sounds like the judgment of Revelation, you know, the lake of fire, doesn't it? As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man come with the clouds of heaven and come to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages which should serve him, his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed." I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretation of things. These bees, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Okay. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever, I'm sorry, forever, even forever and ever, that I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn, that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war, made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and shall and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings and he shall speak great words against and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Think the Talmud, right? And think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, that's a year, and times, two more years, and the dividing of time, that's a half. That's three and a half years. Exactly what in Revelation, the 1260 days, right? But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom of dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Here, too, is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cog Cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So evidently, heads, horns, and crowns are kingdoms. I mean, Daniel pretty much got the interpretation and explained it, right? Verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Didn't we just read in Revelation 1 where it said the uh, seven, what was it, seven stars were the angels? Uh, yeah, Revelation 1.20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in the, my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Hmm, okay. Verse, Revelation 12 and verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So evidently a third of the angels, I guess they were Satan's minions, followed him in his rebellion against God. And they were cast to the earth, right? And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for devour her child as soon as it was born. Oh, boy. Now, this was partly fulfilled when Cain killed Abel. But think about it. Wasn't this also fulfilled when King Herod tried to kill the Christ child? Ooh, I think we need to read that. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to make this the end of part one. And we're going to continue. Uh, let's see, verse four and five. But um, King Herod tried to kill the Christ child, didn't he? when he slaughtered all the kids in Bethlehem? Oh yeah, he sure did. So let's, uh, let's go make this the end of part one, and then we'll continue in part two. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.